You know, uh, even though uh, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we, we're just glad to, as, a, as the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And, and you know what? Uh, as, the, as the kiddos are going off to uh, have their time, we're going to... The, today's message um, actually uh, last week the, the Lord really spoke to my heart uh, it's it's time to to get your house in order and I know he wasn't just speaking to me because I was meditating upon what really to, to speak about what to minister on last week and um, as I was just this just became very very strong in in my spirit that it's time that the church get its house in order but in order for the church to get its house in order collectively we have to we have to get our personal house in order because we can uh, we can preach the gospel we can do everything we know to do uh, as as pastors and teachers and uh, you know, the fivefold ministry is still alive today, no matter what some say. Uh, some don't, uh, don't allow for two of the, um, the prophet or the, uh, they believe in the uh, pastor, they believe in the teacher, they believe in the evangelist, but they don't, they don't believe in the, the uh, apostle or the prophet. Well, you know, uh, God never said that those, those gifts were uh, not needed anymore. So in saying that, I just say, you know, I look at my life, and, and I, I've been kind of reflecting upon this thought of getting my house in order. You know, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, my, my personal house, if you will, my, the, the place that the Spirit of the Lord dwells in me, you know, because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, if Christ dwells in you. If you've been born again, uh, scripture in John 1 says that we've been born from above. You know, we've been, we were born into this world through our mother and, uh, and father. Then we're reborn from above from our father in heaven. It's a spiritual birth. But you know, as I was thinking about 35 years ago, my life was a mess because my thinking was in a mess. My, my life was, my life didn't line up to the Word of God. My life didn't line up to what I was uh, saying I lived because I really didn't have control of my thoughts. And I've had people say, and I, I've, you know, when I've just casually talked to people that would say, you know, I just keep struggling with this thing in my life, keep struggling with that thing in my life. You know, one thing or another, people are struggling with different issues in their life. And, you know, the, the whole reason that we struggle is because we haven't gotten the right mindset about something we're going through. And, you know, what I was going through 35 years ago is not what I go through today. And, you know, I kind of... You know, there are people that, that will say, once, once you're locked into a way of thinking, you'll never change. That this, is, that this is just the way you are. Well, if that's the case, then Jesus died in vain. Because Jesus died to give us a rebirth of our spirits so that we could renew our minds. See, the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, he says I, I beseech you. I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And, and, and he, he says, but don't be conformed to this world. So he's given us a way out of our prior condition. Our condition before Christ may have been really 
screwed up, to put it bluntly. <laughs> it may have been really messed up. And, and you know, even after you become born again, you don't all of a sudden become the Apostle Paul in your mindset. The Apostle Paul didn't become the Apostle Paul overnight. Uh, he, he went away for, what was it, 14 years into the, into, the, into the desert, into the wilderness to spend time with the Lord so that the Holy Spirit could minister to him the things that were going to be, he was going to become, begin to walk into. But in order for in order for the, the Apostle Paul to write all of the letters he did, all of the things that he wrote, all the preaching that he did, you know, it, it didn't just happen overnight. He went through the school of the Spirit as he was, as he was taken into a time of solitude with God. And, and, you know, we don't always get the luxury to do what the Apostle Paul did. You know, the Apostle Paul was a tent maker. Uh, we know that according to Scripture. But, um, you, you know, we know that we know that when he took this time to get alone, and of course, remember too, uh, the days of, of, of Jesus, uh, 2,000 years ago, we didn't have all the distractions that we do today. Uh, you know, one of the things that as we're, uh, we're doing a 21-day fast um, and um, intending to, have intended to start that yesterday, uh, we've done pretty well with it uh, in the type of fast that we're doing, uh, fasting from social media. Uh, there's a few other things that, you know, I'm personally fasting from. Uh, and it's not just so that I say I, 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 I beat something. I'm not trying to beat social media. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that uh, I've got social media under my foot. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of the distractions so that I can hear from the Spirit of the Lord. Because all of these things, I mean, when you wake up at four in the morning, the first thing you do is check out Amazon. You know, is that thing in my cart on sale today? Now, I don't know if anybody else ever, ever done that before, but I've done that. I, I wake up and, you know, Donna may be wanting something, and I'm thinking, you know, in order to get that, I need to, I need to check and see what the price is on it today because, you know, boom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pick it up. Well, you know, that or, or Facebook or or any number of things. And see, we can rationalize in our mind that we're concerned about people when really what we're doing is we're just medicating our loneliness. We're medicating our pain. We're medicating something. You know, that's why on, on Facebook, they'll withhold a lot of, um, they've got algorithms and, and, and ways of luring you back to look at Facebook because they make billions of dollars off of this. I mean, it's a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. So they have learned some things about human behavior that, you know what, we got to get, we may not be out running the bars and we may not be out uh, looking for relationships outside of the marriage uh, uh, covenant that we have. We may not be out there doing things overtly, but what are we what are we allowing into our life that is has become um, a mini god? You know, uh, I've been listening to uh, uh, Doctor uh, Price, no Prince, uh, Derek Prince. Wow, and uh, there is a gentleman from uh, I believe he's from England, but it could be from South Africa. He has that same accent. But boy, you're talking about a about a man of who who uh, really preached the word and preached it straight. You know, I think sometimes I I minister a little hard sometimes. But you know what? Uh, hard preaching uh, is only hard because we think it's hard. <laughs> you know, the 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 demands that the Spirit makes upon our upon our mind upon our flesh. It's for our good, not not to harm us. And and I, I I look at what my life was like thirty five years ago, thirty two years, thirty years ago. You know, it was like it was like I was I was captive 
to stinking thinking. You know, when you're raised a certain way, it's so inbred in you. And then when you're when 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 uh, when what you're raised in is also uh, supported by what you go to school and see and experience, and then even from other entities and supposedly people in your life that are supposed to protect you, they're behaving the same way that you were treated when you were a child. It's like all of a sudden, and then for me, going in the military, and, and, and you know, I'll tell you what, if people think going in the military is going to help you be disciplined, uh, it might help you dis- become disciplined. But it's also going to teach you a lot of other things, too. And I learned quick, once I got in the military, that I wasn't free of drugs. It was there plentiful everywhere I went. I became a drug dealer. I I did, even in the military, did a lot of things while I was in. Uh, there, were, there were some lines that I had that I wouldn't cross, but very few, very few lines that I would cross, wouldn't cross. But, you know... What it took for me was coming to the realization that who I am and who how I see myself needs to be reflected from the Word of God and not from my past. You know, we're not a we're our past either makes us a prisoner or it it, it gives us a somebody said it uh, your past is either a um, a platform or a prison. And, 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 you know, that's that can be true. Our, our past will either burden us or it will give us a platform once we become, uh, once we grow and, and learn how to walk with God. We learn how to subdue our flesh. We learn how to get control of our thinking. Because uh, if we never get control of this thing, we'll, we'll never get control of this. You know, the heart and the head work so closely together. Uh, and we have to get... We have to bridge that gap with the Word of God. And in Hebrews 4, uh, 12 says that uh, the Word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides asunder soul and spirit, thoughts and intents of the heart. So when, when we're in the Word of God, it's revealing to us what we have become, and it's revealing to us who we will become if we'll apply what's in the Word. And I, I wanted to kind of start with that this morning because, you know what, the devil will try to use your past against you every step of your way he will ne- he is the devil is relentless in his desire to steal kill and destroy in our lives you know again i'll say this no matter what anybody says i'm not the same man i was 30 years ago and you shouldn't be the same person you are 30 years from now. We shouldn't be the same that we are. We should be ever drawing near to the Lord and becoming more like him. Because what is uh, what do we say being a Christian is? Being a Christian is supposed to be Christ-like. And some people have watered Christ down, Christ-like down to being just, you know, John 13, 34, and 35, where it says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. You know, it's not, being Christ-like is not just love. Being Christ-like is not just loving. But being Christ-like is is bearing one another's burdens it's 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 believing the best about your brother it's it's being there when when someone uh, uh when someone is hurting and you you can be a, a shoulder to cry on or, or whatever but i want to read a passage here out of psalm 37 when the lord spoke this uh get your house in order it was to be a message and we may be ministering on this for several weeks who knows maybe all year we'll minister on this in some way But in Psalm 37, verses 23 to 25, and I'm going to read it in the King James Version, and later I'll read it in a few other versions. But it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall uh, shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old, Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Let's let's pray over this word today. Father, we thank you for your word, and we pray that 
Uh, Lord, those who hear us through social media today, tomorrow, throughout this coming week, the next month, however they uh, view this, either on Facebook, uh, other social media, YouTube, whatever, uh, God, I pray that the same anointing that's upon this time that we're in will be present when people hear this message, no matter when it is, day or night. God, I thank you. Thank you for the anointing on your word. And God, I ask you that you would uh, speak through me those things that, Lord, will bring clarity and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Now, you know, I struggle with that, uh, the steps of a good man. Jesus said, uh, why call you me good? There is none good but the Father. So really, when you look at that uh, that passage, it, it really says the steps of a man uh, on, and let me go ahead and just read that. I, I'm going to read this in another version because I think it really helps make it uh, make it more clear um, what uh, uh, what's being said here. Um, I wonder if I. Oops. Oops. Uh, I must have printed the wrong document. That's okay though, because we got a we got a Bible on hand here. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go to uh, Psalm 37. I, I do want to read this in another version before I move on too far. Um, I think it would bring bring clarity to uh, to what we're trying to uh, minister here today. Um, I'm going to read it in the NIV. Psalm 37, verses 23 and 24. It says, now listen to this. I, I like this. I, evidently, I, I must have uh, either that or I deleted what I was uh, going. I'm supposed to be printing off here, but that's okay. We can, we can move right along. Um, the Lord makes firm the steps of one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Let's look at another uh, version here as well. Um, in the English Standard Version, it says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord when? The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not uh, be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. So you see that it's not just the steps of a man, not just the steps of a good man, but it's the steps of a man whose ways are pleasing to the Lord that that God will uh, that God will order their steps. Well, again, we're talking about getting our house in order. God will order our steps if and when. We, uh, at, when we draw near to him, uh, James 4 says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. You know, if we're not actively participating in our relationship with the Lord, how can we expect anything other than maybe think that we're just a puppet on a string? You know, I think uh, there are people who have this puppet on a string mentality with God that God is just moving pieces around like, like chess pieces on a board. And, you know, it's it's like we're just we're just dumb. We have no personal, you know, we have no personal responsibility. We just do everything because God's playing a game, and you know, it's a game between Satan and God. And you know, ooh, you know, uh, is God going to win? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> you know, but no, God, we have to actively participate in what God is doing. And God showed us through His Word exactly what He expects. And he shows us exactly how to control our thoughts. He shows us exactly how to do things. The problem is, do and the, and the question is, I should say, not the problem, but the question is, do we really want God's best or are we satisfied with the status quo or are we just satisfied with the life the way it is? If we're not satisfied with the way things are, then you know what? We've got a, we've got a choice. We've got a choice. I can continue in the way I'm going, or I can do something to make it different. What is it somebody said? The definition of, definition of insanity is to continue doing the same thing, expecting a different response. You know, if I keep doing the same thing day after day, day after day, day after day, and, and, and nothing's changing, guess what? 
maybe it's time to stop and look at what we're doing and say, you know what? I can't change everything all at once, but maybe I can change this one thing today. You know, for this 21 days, uh, uh, we like to do a 21-day fast at the beginning of every year. And we've been on uh, Daniel fast, which was the best thing we ever did for ourselves. Uh, you know, it's, it, uh, it really revealed to us the power of food <laughs> and really the power of real food versus fake food. You know, we heard a lot about fake news in the past couple of years. Well, you know what? There is fake food. There is food that simply goes through your mouth into your digestive system and does what it's going to do. But, you know, there's, there's good fuel and there's bad fuel. Just like you go to a gas station, you can get good and bad fuel. You can get, you can get fuel that's tainted with water. You can, get food that, you can get food that's tainted with any number of things. And you know what? Your car is not going to run optimally on fuel that is tainted in some way. You know, this, the pump may say octane 92, but you may be only getting 86 <laughs> by the time. Uh, you know, that's why, well, guess what? We need to keep our car's system clean so that our car will last longer. You know, we got a van uh, 300,000 miles on it. How in the world did we get that far with a van? Well, you know, you change the oil regularly. You check the tires. You change the tires when they need to be changed. You, you know, you, you, you do uh, preventive maintenance on a vehicle regularly, and it will, it will serve you well for a long time. You know, the, one of the motorcycle I have, uh, there's guys online that they say, well, that, that motor is bulletproof. You know, people are dri riding a motorcycle over, over 200,000 miles. And it's like that's kind of unheard of uh, in in, uh, in in motorcycles. Uh, some some have a tendency to last longer, but this particular model, that motor just lasted forever. And wouldn't you know it, that the maker of it decided not to make it anymore. <laughs> Wonder why that would be. <laughs> Maybe they weren't making enough money off of the off the product, right? You know, if you make something to last forever, nobody will come back to you, if, unless they just want something new. God put everything in order from beginning to end. I'll say this. God put everything in the beginning in order. Everything had a place on the day uh, when he created. In seven days uh, of creation, God put everything in perfect order, and he created it when it needed to be created for the purpose that it needed to be created for. Day one called light. Uh, he separated the, the day and night. He called the light day and the dark he called night. Then the second day he created the atmosphere and the firmament uh, 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 of, around, the earth, around the earth or in, in the atmosphere. Day three, he created dry land, seas, and plants on the third day. On the fourth day, sun, moon, and stars. Day five, created uh, the, the creatures that live in the water and creatures that fly. Day six, he created the animals that live on the land. And finally, God's, God's uh, culmination of all things, he created man. He created us. He created us in the image and likeness of himself. And you know what? The crowning moment of God's creation was day seven. Day seven. You say, well, how can rest? How can rest be a part of creation? Well, you know what? If you don't rest, you will die. <laughs> little rest, little health. Adequate rest, full productive life. Uh, there's a gentleman. He he's a, a commentator on TV and. He said, you know, for, for many years, he was very productive. But he said he got very little sleep. He said, finally, his body started to behave wrong. You know, it, his heart wasn't beating right, different parts. You know, he, he was just having trouble with his, his uh, memory. His mind wasn't working right. Uh, so things started to happen. He went to the doctor, and the doctor, you know, it's like, 
you know, how doctors do. They ask the questions, and he said, you just need to get some rest. You need to get rid of the stress that's keeping you awake and begin to rest. Well, now that this gentleman has rested and learned how to rest, he's actually more productive, more fruitful. You say, well, you know, what is the difference between productive and fruitful? Well, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but productive could mean uh, putting out 10,000 parts on an assembly line or, or you know, but we're, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not on an assembly line. Uh, we're, we're human beings. We, we have a body that needs to rest. Needs, you need to breathe. You breathe out. You know, exhale, inhale. It wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to intentionally do that two or three times an hour, just to intentionally. <sighs> inhale the fresh air. Exhale the, the, the bad air. You know, do it in t- excuse me, intentionally. Uh, we can get to where we, our breathing becomes so shallow that we don't realize it. And, uh, and that can cause problems for us. That's why exercise is so good. It stimulates our breathing. Uh, probably the, the best, I don't know, thinking about it, probably the best uh, result of exercise could be the breathing as much as the, the force uh, on the muscles, even though that's necessary too. Well, the earth, the stars, the planets, solar system, universe, everything was created in perfect order, in perfect harmony. And, and you know what? Our bodies, you know, think about it. When you look at your body, can you imagine fingers on the end of a hand connected to a forearm with a wrist, connected to the upper arm with an elbow, connected to the torso with a shoulder, can you imagine your fingers being your upper arm? Can you, can you imagine your fingers coming out of your chest? Some kind of freakish mistake? You know, God was just experimenting. Oh, I wonder what that'll look like. What do you think, Jesus? Eh, let's not do that. <laughs> now that looks a little freakish. How's he going to put his clothes on? But you know, you, your body was created perfectly, everything in perfect order. You know, some of us may, are, are, you know, may, things may be a little different and may not function the same way as somebody else. I'm, I'm glad I'm not seven foot tall. I mean, I don't see a reason for me for being seven foot tall, you know. Um, but, you know, when you look at your body, it's, it's perfectly made to do what God intended for it to do. Even looking at your your eyeball and and your eyes, how it's connected to to your brain, and how your brain is connected to your spinal cord, and and how all the nerves and blood vessels and everything go throughout your body. Everything is in perfect order, working in harmony with one another. One system is working in harmony with another, and if one system gets out of order with another, then that creates chaos. And the chaos can create cancer. It can create uh, all sorts of different diseases and infirmities in a body. You know, uh, one of the one of the uh, reasons they say that arthritis is a problem with people is because of fear. Fear is is a is a root or a cause of of arthritis because of the tension. The tension within a person's body is what's creating the breakdown of the of the joints. It's it's what's creating the breakdown in in muscle tissue and and, and all of what's going on in the body. Fear has a has a, a is is a is a detrimental part. That's why that's why scripture in Timothy, Paul told Timothy, he said, I've I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if God didn't give it to us, you know what, we shouldn't want it. If we're fearing, we shouldn't tolerate it. You say, well, I can't control my thinking. Yes, you can. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to me. You can. How many of you have answered a phone after arguing, while arguing, actually, and all of a sudden your tone of voice and everything changes? You, you're in an argument with, you, you, you're trying to get a child, un, a child under control or, or trying to get something under control. You, you're arguing with a spouse and all of a sudden somebody calls and you're like, hello. You know, it's like, hello, what do you want? 
<laughs> Didn't I tell you? <laughs> no, uh, you, you, you straighten up real quick and you change your posture when you know there's somebody on the line here that wants to talk to you. You can change anything instantly. You may not be able to change some behaviors instantly, but you can sure make a step toward that. And it may take some time to, to completely look at yourself and say, you know what? Hmm, I don't do that anymore. What in the world happened to me? You, know, you may not recognize yourself in, in five months. You may not recognize yourself in, 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 in two years. You may not recognize looking back on this hour and saying, man, I am struggling with this thing so much. What is wrong with me? Well, remember, you're in good fellowship with the Apostle Paul, right? He said, every time I try to do good, evil is always present. Duh. <laughs> I mean, uh, really, are we going to question why that is? <laughs> I mean, we have, we have an enemy again that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He, Satan doesn't come to just allow you to just coast through life and think, oh, I'm just going just gonna to let them go on and you know, live their life and yeah, just keep preaching the gospel. Just keep, just keep loving Jesus. Keep, keep loving your family. Oh, it's great. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the devil that gets in the details and it's not always the devil, but you know what? You can tell when, when things get out of sort and it's a spiritual matter versus just a attitude matter. You can tell the difference. Consider this, and, and I'm going to, I'm not going to take as much time as, uh, uh, as I need on this today. We'll, we'll come back to this next week at some point. But think about this. When God told Moses to build the tabernacle, God didn't say, Moses, go build a tabernacle. You know, Moses could say, what in the world's a tabernacle? <laughs> what are you talking about, God? No, God gave Moses specific directions on on how to build the walls around the whole arena, if you will. He told him where to put the sacrifice, where where to make the sacrifice, put the the what is it, the the golden uh, the the laver, the bronze I think it was a bronze laver where they washed their hands. They would wash after uh, doing the sacrifice because blood would be everywhere. And, and so there had to be a place for them to wash. They, you, you wouldn't go from making the sacrifice straight into the Holy of Holies. You, had, you, you cleaned up before you went into the presence of God. But here God showed him, said, okay, you, you, you have a place to do the sacrifice. There's an altar. You have the, 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 the bronze laver to wash. Then you go into the holy place. It's the place where the showbread, the altar of incense, the gold lamp stand, or what we would call a menorah today. And everything, some things were placed on the east wall. Some were placed on the, the east wall, the west wall. There was a specific place for everything. God was so specific on how he wanted things done that he didn't leave anything to chance. You know, I mean, God surely saw what man was capable of. You know, leave man to his vices and he'll just, you know, throw up anything that satisfies him. But God wanted something that satisfied himself. And then finally, that inner holy place, the holy of holies where the where the cherubim cover the mercy seat you know it's 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 amazing uh, the the drawings and and all that we've seen of of all this it, it's amazing but it everything that god wanted he told moses this is the way you do it if you'll do things this way then he will be satisfied <laughs> And that's, that's, I know that's that's pretty elementary way of, of putting that. But the, really, when it comes down to it, hey, it's either God's way or, or no way. And remember, I think Moses, didn't he say, uh, if you don't go with us, if you don't go with us, or you don't go with me, uh, I don't want to go. Wherever you, want, wherever you say go, if you don't go with me, then I'm staying here. So even Moses recognized that when God had a plan, it was going to work. 
think about this when noah uh when when noah built the ark uh god didn't just say go build me a boat god gave specific directions on how big that thing was going to be and if you've been over to um over to the uh, florence kentucky area uh you'll see uh, a replica of what that i mean when you're standing next to that thing and you get a picture of the you get a picture of the whole vessel with you standing in front of it i mean you you just a, a wee little dot right there when, when you see the whole thing in perspective and think wow this i can see how all this happened now <laughs> God said, "God said you, you're going to design it this way. You're going to use a, sp- a specific wood. Uh, everything. God knew everything that was needed for what was to come. When the temple was built, God told David exactly what he wanted. David, David didn't get the chance to build it. He gave the gave gives the plans to Solomon. Says here, this is what God says when you need to do. He did it." And, and, and God was pleased. In Second Kings, I'm reminded of this uh, story of the poor widow woman. And again, we're talking about order, getting our house in order. See, if we'll get our house in order, we'll get God's best. And, and you know, I think one of the problems with religion is religion has created a form of godliness that satisfies man when we read the scripture and and and, and people will read the scripture and say well you, in order to get absolved of your sin you need to go and confess it to somebody well you know uh, scripture doesn't tell us we need to have anybody to intercede between us and god obviously uh, you know in james he says uh you know uh, confess your sins one to another you know, he, he does say that. But he didn't say, go to a priest and do it. He said, hey, I can come and confess my sin to you. You know, you need to be wise in that. Don't just go around confessing your sin to everybody. Not everybody needs to know your business. But there's something about confession, releasing it. Not that the other person is just hearing it, but that you're releasing it. You know, forgiveness isn't necessarily for the other person. We've said that so many times. Forgiveness is for us. When we forgive, we're releasing ourselves from the, from the burden of, of the, the shame, the guilt, the, the pain, the hurt, the frustration, the, the rejection, the denial, the whatever, whatever is uh, trying to keep us bound. Um, forgiveness will in time release us from that. You know, I, I remember when I first come to know the Lord, and you know, I, you know, from the time I really dedicated my life to the Lord, well, I dedicated my life to the Lord at one point, and and and, and backslid horribly, backslid horribly, and I, I look at when I look at the time where I, I backslid, I, I wonder how could I go from being so sold out to God so excited about the things of God, so into the Word of God, how could I go from that to this issue that rose just seemed to be out of nowhere? And what the Holy Spirit began to remind me is you don't fall into sin overnight. It's a gradual changing of your mindset about something it's it's giving in and then of course satan will satan will provide opportunity for sin and you know in the past 30 years satan has provided many opportunities for sin but you know what thank god to be standing clean thank god to be standing today clean pure before god but you know this 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 poor widow woman and again we're talking about we're talking about uh about um, presenting our bodies to God, a living sacrifice. We're talking about giving God our best. Second Kings uh, chapter 4, there's a poor widow woman who prepares a room for Elisha. You know, I, I, think, of, I think of some of our rooms that we've got at our house, and I think 
we first moved into our house, it, it looked like we just had an immense amount of space. It was like, wow, this is great. Well, you know, here we are 17 years later, and it's like we're thinking, hmm, what are we, where did all this come from? It's like, <laughs> what happened? How did, how did all this stuff, where did it come from? Well, of course, we know where it all came from. It came from Walmart, Amazon, uh, Kohl's, or this place, that place. We know where it came from. But, you know, when we're, when we're thinking about why, I guess the question should be, why, why did we do this to ourselves? But, you know, we think about this lady, this poor widow woman. She's preparing a room, and I don't know what that room would have looked like. Maybe, maybe it was her spare bedroom. Maybe it, was a, maybe it was a storage room. But you know what? She took everything out of this space, and she put in it exactly what the prophet would need. What was it? A bed, a table, a desk, a chair, and a lampstand. Because that's, that's all the prophet required. That's all he needed. Whatever wasn't needed was removed. What was needed was put in. Boy, I hope you can see some spiritual implication in that. God is working today. Do we hear him? How can we prepare our house? The Holy Spirit is doing a work. I mean, if we're going to experience his wisdom, there's about five things here that the Lord spoke to me that, that we need to begin to seek out his wisdom, his discernment, his direction, his correction, and his motivation. Those five things, wisdom, discernment, direction, correction, and motivation. And I'm not going to break all those down right now, but in this season of the Father's heart and his plan for us, we've got to get our house in order. We've got to, we've got to see that there, there's a world out here that's lost and is hurting. And, and, and I know you watching out there and us here, you know, our, if we really search our heart, we say, you know, yeah, I would love to see, love to be a part of, of what God is doing and seeing and reaping the harvest and seeing souls say there, there's nothing better than witnessing somebody come to the Lord. There's absolutely nothing better than seeing somebody surrender their life to the Lord. I can't tell you the number of times we see, see a, 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 within two months or within a month or two of us being here, I can still see, I'm not going to call out his name, but I can still see a gentleman sitting right here. And about halfway through the message, I mean, just weeping uncontrollably, I'm thinking, oh God. It's like, do it again. Give us the opportunity to, to see those kinds of manifestations of the presence of God. Another time when, when, when two or three of the guys were gathered around somebody that they had brought and, and they were praying and interceding for this guy and praying for him and he's sitting there weeping and, and, and just weeping before the Lord and, and surrendering his life to the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing in my mind's eye all those that over the years have come to know the Lord. And, 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 you know, it's like, where are they today? Well, some have gone on to other works. Some have uh, started pastoring churches. Some, some are in France, and some are in different parts of the world. And, you know, different things have happened over the years. And, and over time, uh, different people have gone on to, to different uh, uh, avenues of ministry in life. And, and, you know, we bless them in that. You know, does it does it hurt when when people are not with you that you've sown time and effort and everything into? Yeah, sure it does. You know, but but the thing is, if we can't if we can't release what's in our hand, and people aren't in our hand, we're not holding people. Matter of fact, I've asked some people to leave <laughs> over the years, and and I've made I've made some people uh, I made some people aggravated. But you know what? As I was talking to the Lord about this this morning, you know, I, I yeah, sure, we'd love to see a place full. But we want to know the foundation is right. If the foundation is not right, as we have seen and experienced, 
too many times, if the foundation is not right, then when the winds begin to come and 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 the accusations or or issues begin to rise and we've seen clicks and we've seen things rise up and you know church split and all that kind of thing you know people that say they've never had a church split in their 40 years of ministry are either lying or they didn't see it <laughs> because we may not want to call it a church split but stuff happens all the time so if we're going to get if we're going to get this house in order if this is going to be a place of God's presence we want more than anything for this to be a place of God's presence but if it's going to be a place of God's presence our heart has to be pure our heart has to be right with God and during this 21 days that we're taking to really really consecrate uh, this time to the Lord not that every other day shouldn't be the same but there are seasons that we really need to take time and say you know Christmas came and gone Thanksgiving to Christmas is kind of a blur now but you know that's such a great season to maximize the opportunities that are given but you know now we got January 8th 9th February 2nd March 10th <laughs> July 14th. We, we've got the rest of the year to live, but the way we start this year, I want to start it getting our house in order. And that, you know, hey, that even includes some things that the Lord has been really impressing upon my heart to do at the house. You know, I find myself going through, uh, through things at the house, and I even went through and I've got uh, these plastic shoe boxes and, and tubs and, and everything that's it's full of stuff that I've collected for 30 years, quite honestly. Everything from computer parts and computer gadgets and this and that and the other and stuff that, you know, I've got, st I've got stuff that's not even been taken out of the box yet or the package yet. And that's bad because there's no operating system that will use it now. So... <laughs> It was a great deal when it was on sale, but I never took the time to use it. Wow, what a tragedy that God would invest all that he has in us and we not allow him to use it. You know, I want to encourage us today as Hebrews, you know, I believe Paul was the writer of Hebrews. But he says, lay aside the weight and the sins that would so easily beset you. You know, for me, right now, social media is a weight. It's not a sin. It's a weight. For me, uh, some things that I had started eating again. They, they weren't creating weight, but they weren't, they weren't optimal fuel for the place that God dwells. See, I want you to get the idea that this is the place God dwells. This is the place that God lives. Do we want him to live in an old shack? <laughs> or do we want to say, God, I want to make you look good. God, I want to make you look good in this. At least to the best of our ability. You know, Somebody said, how much makeup is too much? Well, I, I don't know. It depends on the barn, you know. <laughs> it depends on how much. I told Don, I said, I said, hon, you look great without makeup. You don't need all that stuff. And she said, well, it makes me feel good. So, hey, do what you got to do. But the thing is, if we, we got to get, we've got to get the revelation. And if we'll get the revelation, everything else will come easier got to get the revelation this is the place that God lives now this is a place that we have set aside to come together to oh I hate to use this but provoke one another this is a place we this is this is a place that we've set aside uh, you know the, the utilities got to be paid the heats you know if we like the heat we like the electricity we like the lights we we like the AC in the summer we like uh, we like that there's no uh, um, uh, pest flying around anymore. We had to pay the pest guy to come and deal with all that years ago. You know, uh, every was about every May or May or June, 
we get an infestation of, uh, um, oh goodness, little flying critters that tear up wood. <laughs> yeah, those things. Uh, but, you know, what? people were sitting in sanctuary swatting these things, you know, for a while. About three weeks of the year, they, they were everywhere. But you know what? It takes funds to do this. We want to take care of our place as best we can. You know, somebody said, you know, told me, said, well, you know, you need to work on your curb appeal. Well, you know, it takes takes that, folks. <laughs> but you know what? More than curb appeal, I want to be God appeal. I want to be God appealing. And what, what appeals to God? When we When we get our house in order and we begin to actually walk out James 1, 26 and 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God is this. Visit the widows and orphans in their distress. Keep ourselves unspotted from the world. You know, those are those are the things that really appeal to God is that we develop a heart for others instead of getting isolated in our in our little thumb picking world sitting here oh we're we're, t- we're talking to the world but our neighbor needs a hand up we're talking to the world but we're not giving somebody a hand up that we can reach that we can whether it's next door whether it's across the county whatever it is you know we we love serving people you know my happiest times in ministry have always been when we've been over it seemed like overly busy. <laughs> it, my happiest times in ministry have always been the, when the times when we was serving hundreds of people food every month, when we was we was doing things that that just was was what's fulfilling is seeing needs met. That's my heart is to see needs met. You know, Tim uh, Tommy Barnett said ministry revolves in this: find a need and fill it, find a hurt and heal it. That's the gist of ministry right there. Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. You know, we're, we're not the healer, but through us, God can do what's needed. Well, I want us to consider, I'm closing. I want us to consider just how God has put everything in perfect order He's put our body in, in perfect order, everything where it needs to be, everything functioning as it should. And, and if your body's not functioning the way it should, if your mind is not functioning the way it should, this is a good opportunity to, to surrender to God those areas and say, God, you're my healer. God, you're my, you're my psychiatrist. God, you're my, you're, you're my help in time of need. Hebrews 4, 6, or uh, um, help me, Jesus. Yeah, Hebrews uh, 10, 16, I believe it is. It says, uh, come before, uh, come boldly to the throne of grace. 4, 16. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Somebody said, well, you shouldn't be bold coming before God. Well, uh, I think... The way I interpret that is is Abraham. Abraham what? Abraham was fully persuaded that what God said he was able to do. See, that's that's the bold confidence that we, we come before God knowing that we've got a good father. He's put everything in perfect order. He has made it possible for us to be in perfect order even if we mess it up. He can still put back into order the things that we've messed up. See, he, he's the God of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. He's, he's the God that, that will always be there to pick us up whenever, whenever we fall. But he's also there to give us grace, what? Come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain what? Mercy. Mercy when we fail. And grace to help in time of need. Grace to help in time of need. Grace. What is grace? Well, there's grace gifts gifts of the Spirit. Um, the ministry gifts are a grace to the church. What is grace? It's, it's, it says in that verse, grace to help 
in time of need. Well, Paul says in another place that there is no temptation but such as is common to man, but will with the temptation provide what? The way of escape. The grace. There is a way of escape out of every mindset that's contrary to the Word of God. There is a grace to help in every situation if we will stop for a second. Boy, there's some, there's, I'm thinking of some areas right now that I could... I could stop quicker than I do. Sometimes, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. But sometimes, how many of us, you know, think, oh, you know, okay. You got to sacrifice and go, oh, I'm so sorry. I, did, I didn't, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't, you know. How many times are we, do we get convicted of something, but it's 15 minutes later, 15 days later, I like what Sister Copeland said. She says, as soon as, I, as soon as I miss it, I like it when Holy Spirit says, you missed it. <laughs> as soon as you miss it. Because when you sow those seeds, whatever that is, whatever that is, we can pluck up that seed instantly. We don't have to give it a chance to germinate and grow and fester and create an issue and a, and a barrier between us and someone else. There is grace to help in the time of need, and the time of need is always when we need it. Yeah, and 15 days later, yeah, we may need it. But isn't it good to know that five seconds or 15 nanoseconds, we can <laughs> we can say, oh, thank you. You know what? Uh, no, scratch that. Scratch what I just said. Uh, it, that was not right. It, it's, it's so much easier when it's done instantaneously. Well, let's, let's close in prayer. And I just want us to, you know, we need to, we need to search our own heart. Um, it's, I love the scripture, you know, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. You know, we come, you know, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is so much more as you see the day approaching. But, but we, we come together to provoke one another to love and to good works we provoke one another to love and to good works you know when we come together and we put a smile on our face don't don't look at it as those ah oh, they're just faking oh, they're just you know i've seen them you know i've seen them outside of church they don't act like that hey you know, just just get rid of all that you know when we come together it, it should be a good atmosphere <laughs> we should be creating a good atmosphere for one another you know we don't come in and, and we don't have to come in and air out our dirty laundry in in, in public here and you know we, we can come in and have a great time in the lord and then when we leave we want to come back but if we if we leave and say, man, that's a that's a hard bunch there, you know, uh, some people may not want to come back and be a part of that, you know. So let's let's judge our own heart this morning. And and there's a song that was on my heart, and uh, and I tell you what, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Praise the Lord. It's a uh, purify my heart. And I just want us to sing this in closing. Make this our. I want to make this our prayer if we will just make this song a matter of prayer and uh it just simply says purify my heart and uh simply so that i'll stay on key since i don't have my my better music half with me here today i am going to hit some chords <laughs> praise god <laughs> but if you would just sing this and and make this a matter of prayer this is a very familiar song so i don't think you will have a problem uh sing it but it simply says Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold. Sing it again. Purify. 
Purify my heart. Cleanse me from within. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from within. And make me holy. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from my sin. today for uh, God your word of, of, of uh, exhortation, a challenge to get our house in order. And Lord, that's not a hard thing. It sounds like a, a almost sounds like a threat. Get your house in order. It almost sounds like a, a condemning sort of a word. Get your house in order. But it's not, it's not that. It's let's get our house in order because there's great things to come. And we want, we want to be ready to flow with what you set out to do and what you've already planned from the very beginning of time. God, there's nothing new. Nothing new under the sun, what's going on in the government, what's going on in the world. It's nothing new. I mean, we act like this is the first time these things have ever happened in the, in the world. But it, it's not. Uh, these things are just an, a reflection of of what we'd allowed and what the culture has become. But God, thank you that we're not a part of this culture. We're a part of a kingdom that's unshaken, unshakable kingdom. Lord, thank you. Father, we truly make this our prayer. Purify our heart. May we be as gold, pure gold, refined in the fire as, as the apostle Peter said. Thank you, Lord, for this process of refining because we know in the end we're going to be exactly what you want us to be, what you created us to be from the very beginning. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. And Lord, if there's any watching today that doesn't know you, their heart's far from you, maybe they're backslidden, God, I pray that they'll surrender to you right now. And make this a prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned. I'm not perfect. And Lord, I know that I'll never be perfect. But God, I believe. I believe that Jesus came. I believe that Jesus died for me. Thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me to pay the price for my sin. Just, just make that your prayer. Thank you for paying the price for my sin. And now, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Now, Father, for one who would pray that prayer today, I pray that you would just surround them with the love of Jesus. Surround them. Put them in a... In, in, in a, as in a protective bubble, so to speak, to, so that they can get to know you better without interference from the enemy for a season. God, just pray that the enemy will back off right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. The blood, where the blood is applied, Satan is denied. So, Lord, we love you today. Thank you. Thank you for those who make a dedication fresh to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God until we uh, get together again. Be blessed. Those of you joining us through social media, we love you. We pray that uh, pray you continue to seek first the kingdom and know that God is for you, not against you. Amen. Praise God. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah.